Good morning, everyone. How are you? If you celebrated Christmas, I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time. We were kind of homeless, and so we went on Christmas Day to Robin and Andy's, and her boys were there, and it was just the best, the best. Then, uh, see, Christmas Eve, we were at Adair's. We were going to have it here. Well, yeah, right. So today, today, the kitchen's getting painted. There's still a lot of details and this and that. Um, and I'm really scared, but I think it's going to be cool. Okay, I'm going to show you the color. Everybody's freaking out. But my partner in crime, Tammy, who has helped me through the whole thing, said, do it. And we both picked it. Here we go. Family room two. Blue. <laughs> and you know, I have red in the family room now. And then Tammy said, if the red doesn't bother you, you will love this because the red's much more intense than this. So that's super exciting. Uh, before we get started, um, we are going to meet up with Cynthia England today. And actually, we pulled a segment from a sh her show to show you how she does her stuff. It's very, it's called picture piecing. It is totally, totally different. But I saw this, you know, you get sucked into the whole Facebook thing, but this is, or was this Instagram? I'm not sure. But anyways, <laughs> a family with three children and I'm making up the ages but I'm really not two three and five and the three-year-old decided to get up at two in the morning <laughs> and unwrap everything so that everybody knew what they were getting <laughs> oh well, I think it's hilarious although I'm sure they didn't <laughs> Okay, so once a year, we, well, not maybe twice, but we get in my mini group, okay, we call ourselves Opinions Are Us, though we really don't have a name, and uh, Pauline has a wonderful, wonderful Christmas dinner party for us, all right, or lunchtime thing. She, Pauline lives in the warehouse district of Oakland, kind of like if, if you're in the area where the ghost fire, ghost ship fire happened, but hers would be the I Magnus ship. <laughs> I mean, her place is fabulous. She was a stager and she sold her company, 30,000 square foot warehouse, but retained the last part of it. And she just knows how to do it, all right? So we walked in the table. The theme this year, we always had chili and cornbread and all that, but she, we, we went to Chinese food this round. And so here is the table. Just kind of look at that room and take your breath in. Everything is always done to perfection. And through the back door is Laura Nouns, as an FYI. <laughs> so I want to show you our picture. Let me go back this way. We took a group picture of us, and this isn't everybody, but these women, I mean, well, Pauline, she's the one, front left in white is Laura, and then to her right, it, or to... Pauline has the necklace on with the plaid blue dress, all right? This is her house. And then you can see behind me and Denise these kind of incredible mirrors that I'm going to share you a couple of them that she makes. They are, they are art. They are beyond art. And Pauline is a quilter. Pauline is an anything. And anything. Today, I got hold of her and said I'd be talking a little bit about this. And, of course, she's restoring a Victorian umbrella. I mean, who doesn't do that? And then in the front, right, is Freddie. And I got a great news about Freddie. Next to her is Diana. And these are the women that essentially raised me. Okay, so Pauline's new thing are these mirrors. So let's take a look at it. Now, you can see in the reflection how groovy and crazy that room is, but she'll take a theme and then she'll make these mirrors. So this is the sound of music, all right? Uh, let's see, what's the, t I got a couple close-ups. There's Julie. Look at the guitar there, come on. I mean, it's just fabulous. It's not just like from plates. It's from all sorts of 
ceramic um, and porcelain, porcelain would be the right word, not ceramic, things. Um, why is that up? You go away. And then there's the house. She had, I think, about 12 of them in the room, and she's trying to get them into a gallery. Um, this, I love this one. I love this one, the queen. Those are real, those are corgi, porcelain corgis. Where do you find porcelain corgis? I just want to know, okay? So I started going around the room, taking all the pictures, and then I thought, Okay, this is crazy. What I need to do, I gotta get your comments up. I would like to go to Pauline's house and at her warehouse and do a video about all her pieces and how she does her work, et cetera, et cetera. I know it's not quilting, but I think it's something that you might all be really interested in doing. I would say, yes, let's do it. I love going there. It is a place where magic is made. Period. And I've known Pauline since I've been like 25, maybe. Yeah. And I knew her mother. You know, we've known each other forever. And that is the beauty of a lot of the women in that group. Okay. So here we, oh, and those mirrors, holy smokes, they are probably 100 pounds. I mean, they are heavy. Okay. And then I got a couple quilts for us to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it, man. Okay, so this is from Kristen, and this is not quilted yet, but this is her tie project, and it's called Spinning Galaxies. They're four-inch pineapple blocks, essentially. So that's a small piece, which I wouldn't have known looking at it, but, you know, with ties, you are kind of limited. These are just so much fun that these are all coming in. Okay, then this one is a Barbara's. She finished it, all right? Now, you have to appreciate, it's a B-O-M, you have to appreciate that it is hand applique and hand quilted. And I, and I have to tell you something. Um, she went through a hardship. Um, well, she lost her fiance. I'll just put it out there. Right in the, in, during COVID, blah, blah, blah. I mean, so in other words, she was not doing well, all right? And somehow she stumbled on these lives that we started on the beginning of COVID and, and, and it helped her get through. I've, I've gotten emails like that and it really, I'm not asking for them, but I just want to complete this thought. It is so meaningful to me because, well, we were all in our own weird funk during COVID, we could connect and stay united as quilters worldwide. I am blessed that I got to be put in that position. But you guys blessed the socks off of me when you helped me get through this past year. I couldn't have done it without you. And I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. And I think that's really the epitome of a group of people that stick together for any length of time and go through stuff. So I love this platform. I am want to continue doing it next year. Next year is when we're going to meet for the first time. And it will just be on Monday, Wednesdays, okay? I, that, I've got to get, get some common sense knocked into my brain. All right, so <clears throat> with that, I want to throw in, because it is the end of the year. Excuse me, I need a little drink. Sarah Filkey is our block of the month person this year, and we're nearing the ending, nearing the end. And um, if you become a member now, or if you are a member, download Homeward Bound. And we, we're saying it 25,000 times because people don't listen, kind of like third graders, all right? If you're not a member and you join now, you get Homeward Bound, download it now because it's going to go bye-bye at the end of the year. And then you'll also get Pick a Petal by Jen next year. So it's quite a quite an astonishing deal for um, 49 bucks a year, okay? A year. So I'm just going to push it, push it. And I do believe we have kits for Pick a Petal and some of the templates still available. But if it's some, we typically... 
I mean, who knows when we're going to run out, right? We typically run out in, in January as soon as we start. If you're at all going, ah, I think I want it, don't mess with it. Get it now. Because when that kit is done for Pick a Petal, that is done. I mean, that was like, oh, I'm going to say a number and get in trouble. Around 80 different scrap cuts. Around. I, I, Kristen put it together. Okay. And then... Let's talk about Cynthia England, all right? Cynthia has been on the show a couple times, and she does something called picture, um, oh, shoot, um, <laughs> what's it called? Picture piecing, that's what it is. I grabbed a couple images from her site, and I showed this last week. Whoops. I love boats. I adore boats. Everything about boats, boats, boats. So this is... Um, I'm pretty sure picture piecing, but let's take a look at this one. Okay, this is Houston 2000 at, the, at, 2000 at the turn of the century that she did. And I believe it resides in Houston somewhere now. Super fun. If any of you have ever gone to Houston, you, you know, you just know so how great it is. All right, then Houston Quilt Show. Then I love this one, Showtime, because that when you're upstairs and you're looking down, that's what it looks like in the aisles. That's it. And she nailed it. Okay. She won a prize this round, so we're getting there. All right. Um, this is, yeah, picture piecing in Southern Tradition, 51 by 35. I didn't have sizes on all of them. Sorry about that. Aren't these amazing? How do you do it? It is not foundation paper pieced. This is probably, while I love the boats, okay, this comes in as a close second. A close second. So, let's go to um, Houston International Quilt Festival, and Lilo got a little video with her, and then I'm pulling out, um, her, her show, one of her shows was back like in the 600 series. I'm pulling out an expert excerpt to show you exactly how she does it. So we're going to get some learning in today. Here we go. Something about succulents. Hi, we're at the Houston International Quilt Show, and we're here on the floor with Cynthia England, who's been on our show several times. We're so excited that you have won a prize for your quilt. Tell us, what's the category? This category is the large pictorial category, and I was lucky enough to win second place in it. Congratulations. So, thank you. It is fabulous. Now, thank I you. heard you worked on this quilt just a few months. Uh, a, a little over a year. Yeah. Yeah. And it was during the, during COVID. During COVID. And uh, this is probably some of the smallest piecing I've ever done, and, and uh, it was just it was just fun because it was very intense, and I was going a little crazy being at home, so it worked out really good. Like the rest of us yeah. who were trying to yeah. find things to do. Mm -hmm. But isn't that handy that you have all that fabric? I know. I was surrounded by fabric, so it was no problem. So COVID you could was shop. No <laughs> there was yeah. lots of shopping. Yeah. Um, and so succulents. Why succulents? Because you've done, a, you know, you've done a variety of mm -hmm. outdoor scenes. You've done the ones with the, the boats on the water, but I haven't seen anything on this scale. I, I, I'm a big gardener yeah. and a lot of pots and plants and I really like succulents and I like the way that they are the structure of the, the plants and how they can just fall off and you can got a new plant and so I've always really they have fascinated me so I decided to try to do something showing that. With this particular, and what is this particular succulent? Do you know the name of um, this one? I do not know. Okay, mm -hmm. but it does have this color variation mm -hmm. because it isn't just green or blue it mm -hmm. does really yeah, I was trying to do something a little out of my box right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then I hear that um, the quilting was giving you a little bit of a, yeah. a challenge so I decided to quilt it with black thread and have I had never done that before and so what I found is you could really see if you messed up if you did black <laughs> thread so what I would do is go over it again go over it again so some of the quilting is really wide uh, where I would just keep going over it if it didn't look good. Cynthia so England messes it. up? Oh, yeah. Oh, a she lot. does not. And so, but I just figured, okay, it's an art quilt. It can be bigger over here and smaller over here. So it was, and that's how I did it. And I like the way it came out. 
Well, obviously everybody else did as well no, when they were looking you. at it. And I understand that you also like to always sort of have like something little hidden yeah. in your quilts that people have mm -hmm. to find. This technique, um, you, you're ironing to the right side, so it's real easy to kind of hide things in there or put little cutesy things. And uh, my kids always like Where's Waldo, and so I right. always like to try to put something, and it's a printed fabric. It's not something I drew. I, it's actually a fabric. And so there's a little honeybee over here in the foliage that I've got. Well, he is so really I adorable. Thank you. And there would be honeybees near the succulents, yeah. kind of maybe licking some water if after a rain or something. Right. But it is right. just absolutely spectacular. And I know when you're saying that you're doing piecing, it's the piecing without the paper that you're pulling yeah, so out. The technique is called picture piecing yep. and you don't sew through the paper. You really couldn't do this uh, foundation because the pieces are so small that you couldn't tear the paper out. So this, there's no tape, pa uh, paper to tear out in this technique. You actually just move it over. So it's it's a lot more forgiving than regular foundation pieces. Right, but it's how many pieces are um, in there? You, ha I think you had it listed on the I card. always write it on the back, but I can't remember how many it is. I think it's, it's 18,000 yeah. 500 is what it There's is. There's a top number in each section, so at the end, I always just add them up because that's the first question people ask me. <laughs> so that sounds about right. I know there's like 160 fabrics in it, different fabrics. Yes, and they're all and they're all batiks. They're all batiks. Okay, mm -hmm. and they're not ones that you have done. They are commercial no, commercial they're fabrics. No, not hand hand dyed batiks either. They're commercial batiks. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, it is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. So congratulations thank you. on that, it's and fun. thank you so much for being here and sharing that with. Sure. with everybody. Thank you. Okay, Missy Teresa, and I am going to talk about Freddie at the end. Missy Teresa, I'm now going to show you guys a video that she did when she was on the show, was back in the 600 series, and she explains it, all right? So let's go to school right now. We're here in the studio and home of Cynthia England, and Cynthia is so well known for her piecing, actually picture piecing, mm -hmm. and you have a book on it mm -hmm. that you say doesn't have patterns, but it teaches you how to take a pattern, your own picture, and make it into a pattern. That's right. Um, this this little pattern is in there, but the main book is how to take your own photograph and how to turn it into a quilt of your own. And it is not foundation paper piecing. Well, let me show you how this works. Um, in this technique, you have to have two patterns. You have one pattern that's on freezer paper. All right. That one, uh, if you turn it around, it's got a shiny back to it. And one pattern that's on regular paper. Okay. Um, the freezer paper you cut apart. Let me just set this aside here. Um, and you work in sections. You work one section at a time, and each section has um, a new series of numbers, so you only do one at a time. And this is one of the sections up here. Um, what I like to do is I like to block off what I'm not working on. Well, um, let me ask you a question. Okay. You have this in the book, but what if I were looking at this butterfly? How do I even know how to go about, you know, sectioning it off? The drawing is totally different. The drawing, the, you have to learn how to sew it before you can break it down. So it's very much, it's broken down like stained glass is broken down. Okay. Um, so that's kind of another, another Whole process. deal. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stick with the pattern. Okay. The sewing is, it looks like a traditional foundation piece method, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew next to the paper, not through the paper. So you, what you do is you take your, your pattern pieces and you iron them to the right side of the fabric, and that's a little different. Yes, it is. Yeah, you, I get confused with foundation because I can't guess how to flip it. I either flip too much or not enough. So in this, you, you eyeball cut this. You don't measure it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is find two pieces that are the same length, okay, and then I'm going to put them right sides together. Now this, this W or this B, what that is telling me is what fabric to iron it to. So this is wing and that's background. So at the very beginning you cut a swatch of your fabrics and glue stick them down. So that's how I know which fabric goes where. All right, so every single little section has something glue stick down. Correct. All right, Correct. it's your road map or whatever. Right. Now, you see the arrow here? Yes. The arrow's not for grain line. The arrow is for directional fabrics. So if I had a fabric like this, 
Okay, All see right. how it has grass on it? Yeah. And you see how the arrow is, is going upwards like the grass is? Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing in foundation. When you um, do foundation, you're flipping back and you can't get your directional fabrics. It's a little harder to figure that out. So in this, you're ironing to the right side, so that's not a problem. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them right sides together, and how, the way I'm going to see where, how to line it up is I'm going to peel this back and I'm matching the paper up. Okay. I'm not matching the seam allowance up because I didn't cut a good seam allowance. I just eyeball cut this. All right. Okay, so now you take your pen and you have two layers of paper on top of each other. And I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to drag it along the edge and it's going to fall in. So that's how you can see where you're supposed to be stitching. Right. And, and then you come back up through the paper and then you take your fingers and you pinch fold it. Okay, so I'm going to turn this this way and then just go like that. Mm -hmm. And that little pinch fold is giving me a line. All right. Okay. Now, regular foundation piecing, um, you shorten your stitch length because you have to pick out paper later. Right. Um, but the nice thing about this is you don't have any paper to pick out. So what I'm going to do is leave a regular stitch length and you're going to sew from end to end. End to end of the mm -hmm. fabric or the paper shape? The fabric. You're okay. going to sew from the end of the fabric to the end of the fabric, away from the fold. That fold is telling me where the paper is and I don't want to hit that. So you mean like t t a scant away from the fold towards the raw edge? Yes, it could even be more than a scant, and you'll see why in a minute, because if I don't sew it perfect, I can fix it. So I'm going to open this up, and what I want is I want the paper next to each other. So I'm going to open it up, and it's off. See how it, it's not lined up perfectly? Is that a problem? Um, well, it would be if you left it that way, but we're not going to leave it that way. All right. I'm going to just come over to the iron, and I'm going to iron it where I should have sewn it. So rather than re-sew, I'm just going to iron this flat. I'm going to move this pattern piece where I should have sewn it and repress it. That's great. Yeah, you cheat the whole time. Oh. It's not a real picky thing. It looks scary, and but you know what? A cross stitch pattern looks scary until you learn how to do it. Okay, now I'm going to trim this because I want it to be nice and neat. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add another piece. How did you come up with this? It was an accident, a total accident. Uh, what was? I was working with freezer paper, but I was reversing the pattern, mm -hmm. and when I was sewing, it, it looked like this. Well, it was late at night, and I forgot to reverse the pattern, and it came out like this, and I was like, this is good. I can cheat. I like that. Um, so I started um, really working with the technique. Now, I also do stained glass, and uh, so some of the way it's broken up is very similar to stained glass. Um, now, you can go a step further with this. All right. If you have a lot of pieces that are the same colors, you can strip sew the colors together, and then you don't cut the pieces apart. You just peel this off, and then you just iron it on the line, and then cut around it. Of course. Yeah, so you of can, course. there's lots of ways to get around these, these little pieces. Um, so now I would lay this on here, and you can see that's your next piece. Now you can also... Here, let me hold this up, because okay. I want to make sure. Okay. A lot of little pieces here, but mm -hmm. we've got it. Now I didn't tell you what the dotted lines mean. Okay, you see the dotted lines on this side? Yes. Okay, what those mean is, let's see, let me, let me, let me move that away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You just it. Okay, what these dotted lines are telling me is that in this big section, there's little groups I have to sew together. So this is a group, and this is a group. And I like to think of it as a fence. I have to sew everything on this side of the fence before I can cross the fence because everything is a straight line. So you're only sewing straight lines. Well, that is kind of like foundation paper piecing, right? That is a similar yes, thing. Yes, but in this you can chain stitch. Foundation piecing, you, you sew sequentially, one, two, three, four, and you never get out of order. Right. But in this, if you have a big section, you could pin these. Anything that's the same length, like these two are the same length or these two, I could pin these, pin these, pin these and chain stitch them all and then add to them. So it's a little different. Right. Okay, now let me show you another trick. Okay, this, this works really good if you have two pieces, but now I've got three pieces. Mm -hmm. So I'm still gonna line it up the same way um, and I'm gonna check it there. You just mm -hmm. check the corners, not the whole line. And then you take your pin, drag it along the edge. You can put as many pins as you want. I just use one because I'm basically lazy. But you can <laughs> use more. Um, now I'm gonna sew, Again, it's not about a precision sewing. I'm going to sew away from the fold. I don't want to hit the fold. So if you're going to mess up, what you want to do is mess up on the wimpy side. Okay. Because I can always fix it with the iron or I can... Uh, well, what if? Okay, mm -hmm. we got to ask what if you do sew the paper together. That's a good question. If I had sewn over the paper, what you would see paper in this seam allowance. That's right. Yeah. What you would do is pinch fold a new line. Sew the new line and then take your first line out. And that way it holds it for you and you don't have to readjust it. Um, okay, so here I've got three. See, I didn't mm -hmm. sew perfect. So you don't re-sew it. 
you can actually overlap the seam. Okay, so if my seam, I can, I don't, I can actually pick this up and make, as long as the paper touches, my next piece will fit. So if I had a, uh, um, let's say I was doing a landscape and I had rocks on one side and grass on the other. It doesn't matter if your rocks are bigger on than your grass. So when you're doing a landscape, you can really cheat even more than, than Okay, normal. so I was raised, and I raised my children, cheaters never prosper. Well, this time they do. And this, <laughs> right. and this helps, it, it really is very, very forgiving. You can, you can really adjust it a lot more than you think you can. Um, now, you're ironing to the right side, so you can see exactly what you're going to get. So if you had a certain part of the fabric you wanted to use, you could mm -hmm. do that. Um, also, I don't have any paper that I have to pick out at the end, which is really good. So you build the whole thing mm -hmm. up, and then is at that point then you take off all the paper? Um, actually, I could actually take this piece off right now because I'm not going to match um, that. I'm going to match these two ends when I put the next piece together, so I don't need it. So as I'm going, I take them off because I don't want to run over them. And if something's sticking out, I take it off. So, well, I think know. this is totally fun. Now, when somebody's going to want to try this technique, and I know you will because this is really great, I would suggest that you do start with a pattern, right? Well, I have two free patterns on the website. Oh, and yeah, that is? And uh, there's a little train engine and a and an ice cream cone. It's EnglandDesign.com. All right. And, they, and there's videos of me doing it, but you've got this, so you have that already. Um, but it's very forgiving, and it's not hard. It's just a straight line. You never backstitch or inset or anything. I didn't really understand it back then because I was worried about other things. I get it! So here are the um, little free patterns on her website. If you're interested in doing it, I would strongly, strongly suggest you just go do that and play with that for the next couple of days and see what you think. That succulent quilt just slays me. And, and you're right. You She's right. You couldn't foundation paper piece it because it would just be too much. So I'm uh, so happy that she got to talk to Lilo and and we got that interview and then I'm sitting there going, what do we do? What do we do? And I go, we're going to go to the show and I'm going to show that segment. So that's the kind of learning that you get at thequiltshow.com and you can just go back and watch it again and again and again. Back to Freddie. Something, uh, if you're not familiar with Freddie Moran, I am so sorry because she is a treasure to the quilting world. She is 93 years old, and as you can see here, she didn't begin quilting until she was 60 years old. We did a field piece on her when she was 90, and you could go and Google that. It was, I think it was on Sujata Shah's show, yes, and it was remarkable. So now in the meantime, I'm going to jump to another subject matter and then tie it together. Jean Wells has been putting on the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show for 39 years. And of course, now it's been passed to her daughter and others and this and that. But the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, second, is it the second Sacred Saturday or the first Sacred Saturday of July? Sisters Oregon. I don't have to look it up. It is a scene. It is wonderful. All right. And it is huge. If you could ever go, it's a one-day event. There's classes before and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you've got the Stitch and Post, all right, which is Jean's business. And then you've got the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, which is a nonprofit. And so they've got to raise money for the quilt show, all right? And every year they have a luncheon or whatever. I don't know if this thing was all done digitally. I don't know. But Jean asked, would John and I please go to Freddie's house and do an expose on Freddie? So I'm like, okay, okay. Then I found out Jean was going to be there. And all of a sudden, now I'm passing the buck back to Jean. And I said, we're going to come. We're going to tape it. We're going to do it. But honestly, you should be uh, hosting it. Turned out that both of us hosted it and then Freddie. It, I've had people say they've cried who've seen it. First of all, at 93, Freddie is still teaching and she's still throwing out pearls of wisdom that are going to stick in your heart and stick in your soul. And if you've ever wondered what Freddie's house is like, I forget how many colors, there's not a white wall in the house, okay? 
37 or something colors, which makes this like almost laughable that I'm freaking out about it. But John did an excellent job of just getting shot after shot after shot after shot. I'm surprised he didn't open a closet when they might have. <laughs> so, so next Wednesday, I'm going to show that video. And it is wonderful. Now, it's going to be 28 minutes long. I think that's what it ended up being, but I can guarantee you, you will enjoy every single second of going to Freddie's house and catching up with one of the most inspirational women I know. So that is a week, a week, a week from today, right? Uh, Second Sacred Saturday. Thank you, Diana. Second Sacred Saturday. That's my also my guild state. The other thing is you guys asked, am I going to, or what are we going to do about this? Yeah, we're going to kit it and I'm going to teach it after the first of the year. I don't know exactly when because we've got to get all the components. But if you've ever wanted to do wool embroidery and applique embroidery and you're just you're just dipping your toes in the water. I'm, I've kept this to really super simple stitches, all right? I'm going to talk to Kristen and Suzanne as soon as this is over, and we're going to get this thing going so we can get the pieces in place so we can, you know, do our thing. So, D is going to be off for at least three Saturdays because her daughter's getting married. And so she's all involved with that. So that's Leanna. Leanna is actually on the cover of my Kids Start Quilting book. This makes me so happy. So Dee's going to take a little R&R, um, &R, although I wouldn't call it R&R &R if she is planning a wedding. All right. But Monday the 1st, Yay, 2024, make it good, make it good. Barbara has done a record to get you started with the BOM. So we've got that. And then Tuesday uh, and then Wednesday we'll do Freddy. So next week is going to be filled with goodness, in my humble opinion. All right. All right. Oh, here, Diana said, yeah, she went in 2014 to Sisters. It is an experience. It is an ex it's Woodstock, people. It's, it's old lady Woodstock. <laughs> we all keep our clothes on. So, okay. Happy New Year. Be safe. Thank you so much for everything you have done for me. And I look forward to continuing this journey online with you. Please help me spread the word so we can even unite more, so we can build our guild even bigger, okay? Happy New Year. Be safe. Be kind not that hard to be kind world. It's just not that hard, right? Quilters are pretty kind.